everybody is bracketed by their genetics, right? You've got this high and low body fat that you could be based on the genetics you've inherited, and you're kind of locked into that. And all you can do is go back and forth between your genetic brackets and be, you know, either the worst body composition version of yourself possible or the best. And so, like, your only goal is to be a little bit better than you were before and aim as high as you can on your own personal genetic bracketing for body composition. And within that, it's pretty basic. Uh, everybody just wants more lean mass and less fat mass. And uh, like, honestly, if you look at, you know, statistics, the more muscle mass you have, the longer you're going to live. And the lower your fat mass, the longer you're going to live. I mean, you really want to be like higher lean mass, lower fat mass. For most people, I think it's more, more useful to think of it as just this constant kind of main gaining or recomp or, you know, simultaneously gaining muscle and losing fat a little bit of both at the same time. In terms of the diet, it's really, really basic. It really just comes down to protein versus non-protein energy, right? That's, that's the really big picture way to look at it. Anytime you eat protein, you're, you're maximally supporting your lean mass and your muscle. And every time you eat non-protein energy, carbs and fats, you're basically supporting um, your fat mass. And every bit of carbohydrate you eat displaces fat oxidation, you know, because you have to burn it off first. And protein there is there to build lean mass and to build muscle. And as long as you have the anabolic stimulus from resistance training and the protein available, you know, you're going to have a muscle protein synthesis is going to be higher than breakdown. You're going to accrue lean mass, hopefully, again, within these very uh, limited genetic brackets. Worldwide um, humans in general, they're eating about 15% of calories from protein, 14, 15%. Um, in America, over the past six or seven years to the obesity epidemic, we dropped from maybe 15% down to about 12 and a half percent just from protein dilution from refined carbs and refined fats. And you just watch obesity kind of climb with this yeah. drop in protein because now you have to eat more calories to get the same absolute amount of protein that you had before because the protein percent is lower. And that's this whole protein leverage phenomenon. And we know really well how that works from, you know, laboratory animals and studies with different dietary protein percents. And, you know, the closer you get down to about 10% protein with, you know, 45% each carbs and fats, the more you're just going to automatically overeat and get fatter pretty much. That's so what peak obesity would probably be 45% carb, 45% fat and 10% protein. And we're, we're approaching that asymptotically. Mm -hmm. We're approaching this here in America which is not good. So what you see is that anytime protein percent goes up, you tend to have basically weight loss. Like if you look at the, you know, um, the database of successful weight loss, you know, in America, like people who've lost, uh, you know, a statistically significant amount of their body weight and kept it off, they're getting protein up to like 19, 20%. DoctorsToTrust.com, the world's number one site for short, annotated nutrition videos.